Hello everyone and welcome to the Blindside Podcast. We are back once again. It is I, your host, Blind Metal Gamer here, and it's now time for the beginning of season number two of the Blind Side. I want to welcome you exclusively to uh, this epic podcast where on over on Twitter at Blind Metal Gamer I ran a poll. What would you like to see for the first topic of season two? The Last of Us Part Two or Ghost of Tsushima? Well, Ironically enough, they got a tie, so what we're going to do here is tonight I'll be talking about The Last of Us Part 2 in depth, and then next week on August 9th, which was going to be the original start date for the uh, podcast, I will talk about Ghost of Tsushima. So, okay, let's start with The Last of Us Part 2. The game was released in June of 2020, and is made by Naughty Dog, and it it, it is exclusive on the PlayStation 4 console. Now, you're probably wondering, Blind Metal Gamer, what makes this so unique? Well, for me, being partially blind, I'm actually able to play it and enjoy it because of all the great accessibility features. You heard that right. Accessibility features. Shout out to Brandon Cole, a.k.a. Super Blind Man, for uh, the uh, great work he did with Naughty Dog on making that happen. So once you boot the game up, it will start speaking to you. It will tell you out loud um, the agreement terms. And it will tell you out loud your brightness levels and all that stuff. It will then, you know, when you start playing the game, it will describe to you how to move forward if you hit... If you click the left stick on your controller, it will point you in the right direction, which I wish a lot of these uh, other games, <clears throat> Assassin's Creed <clears throat> and God of War <clears throat> would take a cue from. Now, I'm not bashing any of the other studios like Ubisoft or Sony Santa Monica. I just wish that they would look at The Last of Us Part Two as inspiration for accessibility in gaming because... Man, The Last of Us Part 2, you boot that sucker up and you're going to be sure to you a sweet, I'm talking a plethora of accessibility gold. I know when I booted it up, shout out to Denver Queen for recommending it to me. Uh, that was pretty cool, so um, thank you to her for that. I originally was not going to get the game and she's like, no, no, you need to get it, you need to get it. And um, I got it and when I started playing it, yeah. The uh, accessibility is just amazing. It's got accessibility for visual impairment, motor uh, skills, uh, color blindness, um, total blindness, combat assistance. So, you know, anybody can play this game. And personally, I got my set up to where it'll help me with uh, aiming, and I can skip puzzles, I can... It'll read things to me out loud, which is great. And, of course, the navigation assistance, which I love. And I also love the uh, listen mode because that helps me find enemies and items in the game. So, yeah, I would say that uh, The Last of Us Part 2 is definitely the gold standard in video game accessibility. And the reason why I really want to take a deep dive into this, I'm not going to talk about the story. I'm not going to really talk about enemy types or nothing like that because I want people to experience it themselves. The reason why the accessibility is so important is because this is sending data to Sony for developers such as Insomniac, Sony Santa Monica, and maybe even the third party devs like Ubisoft and <clears throat> NetherRealm Studios to get involved on the action and make their games more accessible to people with disabilities. And I really want to see that happen because you know, me as a partially blind gamer, um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I've, I've been through some experiences here lately that um, could uh, affect my quote-unquote partial blind status. Uh, and as a gamer, I want those games to be accessible to not only myself, but to people who are totally blind. Because let's say I was to go totally blind, or let's say I had a friend that was totally blind, hypothetically speaking, and they wanted to play, let's say, the new Tomb Raider, or they wanted to play, say, uh, Mortal Kombat or Injustice 3. Well, if those games aren't fully accessible, then, you know, how can they be played if you're blind? 
that's where Super Blind Man came in. He went to, to Naughty Dog, he got to work with them, and he really did a good job on getting the game accessible. Uh, it will read the tip screen to you, it will read uh, your recipes, it'll tell you what weapon you have selected, how much ammo you have, your reserve ammo, all of that. It'll tell you your recipes and your crafting, how, what you need to craft a certain item and what you need to um, get that item crafted, what um, ingredients you need to get remaining. It will also tell you out loud, let's say you picked up a journal entry. It'll read you that journal entry out loud. There was an instance where I was in a part of it where I needed the bank safe combination, right? I go into my menu, I go to my collectibles, I get that bank safe combination, and I'm able to input that independently without a guide. Now, had, I, had that not been doable and had it not read that to me out loud, I would have needed help. So, yeah, thank you, Naughty Dog and Super Blind Man, for making this game accessible. And I think that. It's very imperative that The Last of Us Part 2 be the benchmark and the gold standard for video game accessibility. So if there are any other developers such as NetherRealm Studios or Ubisoft or um, I know that I think Insomniac is working on a new Spider-Man game uh, and a new Ratchet & Clank. If you guys are listening, if anyone from these great studios are listening to this. I highly recommend play The Last of Us Part 2 with the accessibility features. Use these features and jot down, you know, how they made it accessible. You know, um, because I think that this would really help these developers that they want to get their game accessible. I know that, like with NetherRealm, for instance, um, they, Mortal Kombat 11, they have a menu reader. It reads your... Um, AI battle menu, it reads your, in, your uh, main menu, it reads your uh, fight options, your online battle options, but it don't read like your moves, it won't read your uh, your uh, character input, or your character on the highlight screen, it won't read um, the tires and tires of time, and I get that they're starting out, and I get that that was a very good effort by them, but I think when they update the game again, if they do, they should update Mortal Kombat 11 and include greater menu uh, reading options for the blind and visually impaired. Um, I also think like Ubisoft and Assassin's Creed, they could take some cues from The Last of Us with uh, the reading of the menus and uh, navigation assistance to help players find their way around in the world for the story. Um, and then another game I won't, I'll go on and name it Ghost of Tsushima, which I'm going to talk about next week, uh, could use some, uh, of these cues as well. So, if anyone from Sucker Punch is listening, you know, again, The Last of Us Part 2 is inspiration for that. And as I alluded to earlier, I'll be talking about Ghost of Tsushima next week on the podcast. This is all about The Last of Us Part 2, so let's dive a little bit into the story, into the gameplay. In this game, you play as Ellie, and she's all grown up now, and um, you also play as a girl named Abby, and you encounter more infected, you have to kill the infected, you can do so by either shooting them with firearms, or killing them with melee weapons, or with stealth takedowns. Um, So, you know, you have your options, and the accessibility options will help with the combat. They do have combat accessibility in The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, so that's good to go. And then they have a lot of other accessibility, like you know, color blindness, the reading of the menus and whatnot, um, the navigation assistance. And they also have a thing called Listen Mode. And Listen Mode is amazing. It helps you to find your enemies, it'll help you find items. So they did a pretty good job with that. And I believe that The Last of Us Part 2 in uh, hindsight is going to go down as one of the most greatest and innovative games out there and I'm hoping that for the future Naughty Dog and other developers will take heed of The Last of Us Part 2 and incorporate all these great accessibility features in their titles so like if Naughty Dog let's say they make a Jack and Daxter um a third a new Jack and Daxter game or a new you know Jack game incorporate these accessibility features in some way in that new game because 
you're 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 gonna help yourself in the long run. And the, I'm not just saying this to Naughty Dog. I'm saying this to any game developer that's out there, that's listening to this podcast, that's wanting to know inspiration for accessibility in gaming. Go home, play The Last of Us Part Two completely blindfolded. Don't peek. Use those accessibility features and use those features to provide yourself with immersion and see how us blind people have to play or how someone with uh, motor control um, issues might have to play or like someone like with CP may have to play you know that has motor control issues use the accessibility features that are at your disposal and take notes on how you can develop your product to be like that and to be fully accessible or and better improve your product and make it more accessible the next time you make a game. Again, I'm not dogging anyone or scolding anyone. I'm just saying, I, as a blind gamer that likes metal, hence blind metal gamer, and this is the blind side, I would like to see more accessibility in video games. And The Last of Us Part Two is, in fact, the best representation of that. And I feel, and I would like to, again, send Nutty Dog nothing but praise and admiration for really making this the most accessible game on PS4. All the way around. I mean, there's no way around it. You can't deny it. It's accessible. It's fun. It's great. It is an amazing game. I highly recommend it. And I highly recommend that, um, you know, if you haven't played The Last of Us Part Two yet, Go play it, go enjoy it, go enjoy its accessibility, and enjoy the goodness that it provides. This has been episode one of season two of The Blind Side. In the next episode, I'll be talking about Ghost of Tsushima. And I will talk about its accessibility features and how Sucker Punch needs to improve that game. And I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the game as a whole and all that good stuff. So... With that being said, I would like to bid everyone a good evening or a good morning wherever you're at in the world listening to this. And as always, my podcasts are available on Spotify, Castbox, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, Anchor, and as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you later. So long, everybody. <laughs>